Okay, practice test for these. If I saw these, this is what I would do. Perform the indicated operations. I have G compose H on number one here. G compose H of negative 3A. That's important. So maybe what we'll first figure out is we'll, we'll figure out what G compose H looks like as a function. And then we'll worry about the 3A thing. So if I were to do H com or G compose H, that's a G at its onset. It starts as a G, so it looks like the G function up here. So that'll be 4 times something minus 1, because that's what G does. So for number 1, we'll be like 4 times something minus 1, because that's what G looks like. And it's G of something. And then it's G composed with H, so it's G of H. H will be plugged into the G, so it's A minus 3 plugged in to the G function. And then from there, you can leave it or you can, you know, distribute it and simplify it a little bit. So if I distribute that, that's 4A minus 12 minus 1 makes a 4A minus 13. From there, what we would say is, well, this is what H or G compose H of A looks like. Now we got to figure out the minus 3a thing, because that essentially is saying, now I figured out what g compose h looks like. Now i got to plug in some other weird thing into it. And so this is what that looks like. We'll say, now I know what the composite function looks like. It's 4 times something minus 13. 4a take away 13 from what we got before. And now I'm just plugging something into that. And so what I'm plugging in is what they gave me to plug in, negative 3a. So instead of a... We're putting negative 3a in there, and then we'll just see what that looks like. So 4 times negative 3a is a negative 12a, and then take away 13. That's all she wrote on that junk. Very similar process for some of the other ones. I won't talk you through quite as much on the others, but that's my take on number one. On number two, it would look real similar. Here is my take on how that would at least go without as much yapping about it. Let's see here. So on two, if we got H composed G, that means start with the H function, which is just negative two times something, and then plug G into it, and that's two A to the third plus one. And then you're there, you're good there. Maybe we'll distribute the negative two, so it's negative four A to the three plus negative two. Maybe I'll just pick that on minus two. That looks good, that's H composed G. And then what we got to plug into it is a take away 1. So we'll say, well, I got the function. Now plugging in a take away 1, that'll be negative 4 times something to the third minus 2. And that something is a minus 1. Once you're there, we, I mean, probably I'd be tempted to just leave it because it'd be a nightmare to times this all out. 8 minus 1 to the third is going to be a little bit of a foil monster. And so, here, we'll do a little eraser trail. From there, guys, I guess what it would look like if we took it from there, as we would say, A minus 1 to the third, we could figure out. Let me put that little 3 back. <laughs> and then we'll distribute the negative 4. So we have A minus 1 to the third. That's A minus 1, A minus 1. And then after that, we'll do another A minus 1. If I started out on the right hand 2, and I foiled them out, the long hand would be a squared minus 1a minus 1a makes negative 2a plus 1 if I foiled it all out. And then times that by the other a minus 1, shoot, that's going to be a to the 3, then minus 2a squared, then plus a then minus another a squared, then plus a 2a again, and then minus 1. Looking good. And then we'll combine some like terms. So from there, we have a to the third shows up once, then minus 2a squared is, and oh, minus 2a squared and minus another a squared is minus 3a squared plus a, and then plus 2a is plus 3a, and then minus 1, we have all of that, and remember, it was that stuff times negative 4, and then minus 2, if I remember right, if I remember right, and then we'll distribute the 4 to all of those, and then put some like terms together with the minus 2, and then you're good. That's how that one would go. 
Well, you know, that one's kind of nasty if you have to foil it all out. I'm not sure what it says in the answer book. Maybe you don't have to go that far with it. Um, I guess it's just, well, you know, we can check that out. Anyway, on these next ones, three and four, they're not as bad. Because you just do G compose H of X, and then H, G compose H of X again. So there's not anything extra plugged in. So we'll just compose the two functions together and call it good. So G compose H means start with a G. Native 2 times something plus 1. I'm doing number 3 here. Native 2 times something plus 1. And then that something is the H function, so that's X minus 3. And then you take that and distribute the negative 2 to it as well. And you get what you need to. That's just combining like terms after that. Same thing here, a little bit weirder looking. Decompose H means start with the G function 3 times something minus 3. And then that something being the H function again is negative 3X squared, or to the 3 minus 2X squared plus 2X. And then from there, again, you might be able to leave it, but otherwise we'll distribute the 3 into all of that and then see if there are any like terms to combine. I don't think there would be at that point. That's what those ones end up looking like. Finding the inverse of each function. Remember on this, to find inverses, we'll say, I'll call this a y at first instead of f of x for easier notation. And then we'll switch them, pulling the switch. And so I'll put an x here now equals negative 2y plus 4. And equals and my negative are running together. Now it looks worse. So then from there, we'll just go until the y is by itself. This is a 4, not a y over here. And then, let's see here. We'll get the y by itself. If I have a plus 4, we'll minus the 4 to both sides, I guess. Boom. That'll give us x take away 4 on the left-hand side equals negative 2y. That's good. And then we'll get the 2 out of there, divide by negative 2. Looking good. Now we got y equals x minus 4 divided by negative 2. That is a good inverse. And there'd be other ways to write that if you want to move the negative to the top or something. Anyway, looking pretty good. And so that is our F inverse. And then number six here, if I were to put the X on this side, pull the switch, you know, terms two, or equals two times Y minus two to the three, we'll start getting the Y by itself. So that two's gotta go, the outer two, gotta go, we'll divide it, and now we have X over two equals y take away 2 to the 3. Maybe it's time to get rid of the 3 power, so we'll 3 root both sides. Then the 3 root and the 3 power will undo each other. And all we got left is y minus 2 on the right-hand side equals a cube root of x over 2. Getting rid of that minus 2, we'll just plus 2 to both sides and call it a day. Now you got your inverse of that one. It's just cube root of x over 2. All of that plus 2 looking good. A little bit of erasing will help us to get to number seven. This one will be a similar experience. Let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all that. 